Well, I have some exciting news. This little Amel fat-tailed gecko is gravid, which means she's got eggs in her. And I'm waiting for her to lay these eggs in her lay box here. And I mean, she won't leave the box, so I think she's close. And I can see her carrying them down there. Let's see if I can show you a little bit better. Hey, girl. I know I woke you up. I'm sorry. Yeah, she's holding them right here and then on the other side, too. So, I mean, that white spot is probably one of the eggs. And then she's carrying the other on the other side there. And they're close. They're close. Geckos lay two eggs at a time, so it's pretty easy to know where they keep them. Now I just have to wait for her to lay them. Did you lay now? Oh, ooh, she pushed all the moss aside. That means she either laid or is just about to. Let's check it out. Hey, girl. Nope, no eggs yet, but I think we're really close. I think she's going to lay them tonight. All right, let's see what we have today. Um, I don't think we have eggs yet. Oh my gosh, she laid an egg! Well, just one? She, lay, she laid one egg. <laughs> Look at that. All right. It's a little squishy, but hopefully that'll harden up. Okay, well, I guess we... We also have an exploding false chameleon. Oh, look at that. I love how these guys shed. Yeah, from top down. And it splits right down the middle. We even have, he's got little pajamas on. Oh, we've got the gloves. He looks so angry. Yeah, he does. Oh, I'm sorry you're going through that right now, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so mad. All right, that's going into incubation. Okay, we've got our perlite here. We've got a little indent in the middle for the egg to go, since there's only one for some reason. I have a helper at my feet. Hi. Hi, Stinky. Okay, what have we got? Still just the, yep, yeah, just one. It's been actually about four hours since I first saw the egg. I had to go to my Herpetological Society meeting, and the egg was fine here in the humidity box. Man, it seems really squishy. I don't know if this is fertile. Might not be. It might be, though. I mean, sometimes I've found they are kind of soft at first until they harden up a bit. So, keep the same orientation. I'm going to kind of cushion the sides to kind of nestle it in. And this way, it shouldn't roll around at all during incubation. Some people even, like, completely cover up the egg with the perlite or vermic vermiculite, whatever you're using. I'm not going to draw a line on it to keep to mark the orientation. Instead, for this one, since it's so squishy and wet, I'm just going to leave it kind of covered in perlite, and it shouldn't move at all, so we should be fine. And the reason why I'm a little worried about it being fertile is because it kind of has a yellowish color to it and because of how much squish it has. You are not helping. Yeah, you're chewing on my arm while I'm filming. You're chewing on my foot. What are you doing? Yes, you. Oh, thank you. I guess I'm dirty. I appreciate that. Yes. Well, now I'm going to place this in our incubator room, which is just our green tree python room since it's heated. And it'll sit at about 80 to 81 degrees. And I have my helper on the floor. Hi. Are you a cutie? Oh, goodbye. So this won't be the only egg she has. Uh, Fat-tailed geckos, she's up there. Fat-tailed geckos will have several sets of eggs. So I'm hoping in about, really? I'm hoping in about like three, four weeks, we should have another, hopefully a pair of two eggs like they usually lay. Or maybe she'll just have another single one, but we'll see. All right, this egg is about two and a half weeks old. And I don't even need to candle it to tell that that's a dud egg. Look, it's crumpling in or caving in on itself. It's yellow, it's like moldy and slimy and gross. So I hate to say it, but her first egg of the season is garbage. I totally missed that shot on the camera. Well, I just got back from a little business trip and it's been about two and a half weeks since she laid her first set of eggs. So let's see if we have any new ones. I have the male with her again because it doesn't hurt to have them paired after they lay their first set. Don't mind the noise in the background. Ed's misting his isopods. All right, girl. Did you lay any more eggs? Oh, you dug all the bedding off to one side again. Hi, sweetie. Do you have any eggies? Let's see. Nope. Let's move you over here. Oh! Hey! Oh, she laid two this time as well. And these actually look, well, yeah, they're a lot firmer than the first one. And that first one was really squishy, which is why I didn't have super high hopes for it. So we're going to get these into incubation. Good job! 
The only problem with these plastic lay boxes is geckos can, they can stick these eggs to the bottom of the plastic and then it's hard to peel them off. Set you in there. And I'm gonna kinda cushion the sides to prevent it from rolling during incubation. To be safe, it never hurts to add a little line or an X on top of the eggs so you know which way is up. And let's grab her other. This one's really stuck. So I'm gonna just slowly move it off. There we go. Okay, it wasn't very stuck actually. There we go. Email mom laid some eggs. Good job, mama. Unfortunately, the Amel eggs did not make it, but we have some great eggs from Milton, who was just our normal fat-tailed gecko. The eggs that were um, laid on March 27th, it's now June 3rd, so they've been incubating a very long time, but this one is looking pretty close. Let me show you what I can see here. If you look at this egg on the left, there's a tiny little indentation right there. It's kind of hard. I'll see if I can zoom in. You can kind of see it, kind of not. I don't want to rotate the egg, but on the left side there, you can see how it's starting to dimple. And that's a sign that it's getting really close to hatching, which means that that one should be hatching soon too, because they should theoretically hatch uh, within 24 hours. So we're getting close. Oh my gosh, there's one of the babies. It hatched. Hi, dude. Oh, you must have hatched overnight. I didn't even see you pip yesterday. Oh, hi. Oh my gosh, I always forget how little these guys start. You are adorable. But which egg did you hatch from? Which one did you come out of? Oh, and he's crawling away. Dude, those are the false chameleon eggs. This one feels pretty empty. Oh yeah, it was totally this one. Yep, that's where he cut out of. Aww, cool! It was the dented one, and that means that this egg should be hatching today, too. And if it's not hatched by this evening, I think I'm gonna cut it open and uh, help the little guy out. But since they were laid on the same day at the same time, like literally within minutes of each other, they should hatch at just about the same time, too. I ran into an issue. I have them in my hand because I don't know how to put this lid back on there without squishing him. I don't know where to put him. Here, dude. You can chill with some really big bull snake eggs for a minute while I set up your baby bin. Oh, you are so cute. Doot, doot, doot. Oh, sorry. Didn't like that. Let me get your baby bin ready. Here's the little baby bin I have prepared for the little ones. Once that one hatches, then I'll be putting both of them in here. It's pretty basic. It's just a cave, a rock that offers some traction, so something for them to climb on, and a little water dish. I'm not expecting them to drink from that, though, honestly. I mean, first, it's pretty tall, but I really just put it in there to keep humidity levels high. But we're going to open this up and put him in. Baby! Oh my goodness, you are running around! You've got so much energy. Come here. You're so little. Oh my goodness. You are cute. Half of the babies we hatch here have stripes down their back and the other half do not. And in the wild, they... oh, you're just, are you licking your eyeball? That is precious. Oh my gosh. You are so cute. So yeah, some of them have stripes. Some of them don't. It kind of depends on the parents. I prefer the stripe look. This one doesn't have a stripe, but he's still super cute. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's put you in here. There's your baby bin. Oh, you still got your... Oh, never mind. Goodbye, I guess. So we're going to leave him and the other one once he hatches uh, alone in here for about a week. Not even feeding them because they're still absorbing that yolk that they've been receiving nutrients from during the entire uh, process of incubation. And by the way, I should mention, these guys have been in incubation for 76 days. That's a long time for incubation. I don't know why they took so long, but there you go. Sometimes geckos take apparently 76 days to hatch. And they were incubated at approximately 80 degrees Fahrenheit for anybody interested. So there you go, little dude. I'll uh, add your brother or sister once they hatch. And if you haven't hatched by tonight, I'm going to peek inside and make sure you're doing all right. All right, it's only been a couple of hours, but this other baby should have hatched by now, I feel. So I'm going to take a peek inside and see if there's something going on. I basically cut a little hole in here, and you can see the fully formed baby in there, but he's not responding at all. So I'm not sure if he's alive, which does sometimes happen. I see a lot of unabsorbed yolk right there, and so I don't think this guy made it, unfortunately. Are you alive? Oh, I don't think he is. Bummer, he was a 
He was a striped one, too. See the stripe down his back? It seems like half the time one of the babies will hatch and then the other one dies in the shell. So I think what we're going to do from now on to prevent this from happening is as soon as one of them hatches, we're just going to go ahead and cut a little slit in the other egg. Because they are, you know, theoretically ready to hatch, so they should be fine with a little slit being cut in the egg, and that should help them come out. So we've learned from this, which is good. It's too bad that he didn't make it, but yeah, in the future, we shouldn't have the second one die on us. Aww, someone is one week old to the day, and he's right on time going through his first shed. It looks like you have just a onesie pajama on. Yeah. Shedding his skin should stimulate his appetite, so after the shed is complete, then we will try offering him food for the first time. And check this out, it's day 71 for these two eggs from the same pair, and they are starting to dent, so I bet those will hatch by tomorrow. It's kind of funny though, because these and this little guy were laid about two weeks apart, but they're hatching one week apart, and they were incubated right next to each other. That's kind of fascinating, actually. Little baby Gecko is a little over a week old now, and he has officially shed. He ate it all up, so he looks great, and he should be ready for food now, too. So we're going to see if we can get him to eat his very first meal. Look at this tasty roach. Get it. Here, you were so close. Yep, you're licking your lips. Doesn't that taste good? Oh my gosh! He just took it right from the tweezers! Oh, did you just have to taste it first? That's his very first roach. Aw, good job, buddy. Do you want one more? That was so cute. Yeah, now that you know that this is food, try this second dubia roach. Oh, 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 that one was scary. It's back there. Get it. Are you scared of it? Here, try this. Oh my gosh. Oh, you don't want that one, huh? Well, I guess he just wants the one roach. That's okay. Him eating it all is a fantastic sign, and since he took that roach, no problem. I am confident that he's going to do well. He looks perfect. You are so, so cute, little dude. And uh, as he grows, of course, not only will his size change, but that tail will get a lot thicker as he gets bigger, too. It starts out about that size when they first come out of the egg. Oh my gosh. You are so stinking cute and tiny. After a few weeks of consistently eating for us and a little bit of growth and maybe a shed, he will be ready for his new home. We do have a waiting list that's pretty full for these guys already, so I will be going through that once he is ready. And thank you guys for watching his little adventure from egg to baby. And as always, thank you to all of our Patreon backers for supporting our channel. You guys are incredibly generous. And we are very excited to show you our first baby African fat-tailed gecko of 2020. He's so chill too. That's what I love about fat tails is they are super laid back. Leopard geckos are amazing as well, but these fat tails just seem to naturally have a gentle disposition. And that's why I like to recommend them for first time gecko owners. And I also use them in my programs. When I bring them to schools and scouts and libraries, I use fat tailed geckos to teach with because of how mild mannered they are. As fat-tailed geckos and several other species of geckos explore and move forward, they kind of taste their surroundings with the tip of their tongue. So as they're walking around their enclosures, or in my case, my hand, as they move forward, you'll see them occasionally doing a little blip with their tongue just to see what's in front of them. Thank you again, everybody, for watching this little adventure of gecko breeding, and we'll see you next time. Oh my gosh, another one just hatched. You're not an email, are you? Oh, there's also bull snakes right there. Hi, little cutie. Whoa! You might be a little Amel. Huh. Okay, now I want to know. So we've got the first little baby right here, who's doing very well. And then there's you. That's totally a baby Amel! Oh my gosh! We've never produced one before! Yay! Look at you! You've only produced normals before! Oh, you're so much lighter in color, and you look so confused. So confused. Oh my gosh. Look at how cute they are next to each other. Ah! I can't believe we produced an Amel finally after like five years breeding these guys. Man, the color difference is huge. I have to edit this video tonight, so I won't be able to do more updates, but it'll be pretty much the same thing where we let this guy sit for about a week and then he'll eat his shed and that'll spark his um, appetite 
and we'll be able to feed him too. This must mean that Milton is het email because she was paired with our email male. I had no idea about this. Milton, you didn't tell me you were het email? That's awesome, yes. Isn't that awesome, Cheyenne? Who'd have thunk that a plain old fat-tailed gecko from PetSmart originally, a long time ago when they carried them, would have been hit Amel? That's awesome, girl! Also, congratulations to you, sir. You are now a father.